What's up, folks? The Sports Book Killer, UFC 301. We got a lot of fights on this fight card. It is an amazing fight card. Y'all going to love this. UFC 301, make sure y'all do not miss it. Uh, a lot of fights on this card, so let's get right to it. Um, in the early prelims, we got the flyweights. Alessandro Costa going up against Kevin Borjas. Both of these guys are good. Both of them. Uh, Kevin Borjas, his striking is phenomenal. Uh, you could just ask Josh Vaughn on that one. He... He gave Josh Vaughn some work. Um, Alessandro Costa gave Steve Ursek some work. So both of these guys striking is good. I have to give Alessandro Costa the edge and the power. Um, and on the ground, uh, Costa is a jiu-jitsu black belt. Um, he's a very hard puncher, and he throws very good leg kicks. As Borjas throws very good leg kicks as well. So um, I'm hoping that Alessandro Costa mixes in some grappling and takes this fight to the ground at least two or three times to get us uh two rounds and I'm going to go with Alessandro Costa to get it done um because he is the harder puncher he is a good striker his boxing's uh pretty good as well um but if he can mix in the takedowns he has a relatively easier path to victory than if he stands and tries to bang with Kevin Borjas so the pick is Alessandro Costa and I'm going to take the bet that the fight starts the second round and that the fight starts the third round on DraftKings. Um, next fight, we got the lightweights. Ismail Bonfim going up against Vince Pichel. Uh, a 41-year-old Vince Pichel. Uh, let's rock with I'm going with Ismail Bonfim. This kid is explosive. Uh, he's only 28 years old. Um, he's done a phenomenal job fighting. Um, and he's hard to take down. So you try taking this guy down, he has good takedown defense, he has a good ground game, and he's a pressure fighter. He likes to force his opponent into mistakes. Uh, he's a versatile striker. He does a lot of different things, flying knees, kicks, leg kick. He does it all. So I'm going to take Ishmael Bonfim over the 48-year-old Vince Pichel, and I'm going to uh, take the bet, that the, the prop bet, that the fight starts the second round. Next fight, we got the flyweights. Dionne Barbosa going up against Ernesta Caracati. These are the flyweight women's division. Um, this is pretty short and sweet here. I like Barbosa in this one. She's a jiu-jitsu black belt. She's a judo black belt. She has strong leg kicks, great takedowns, and a great ground game. I don't care who she's fighting. Just those credentials alone make me ride with uh, – Miss Barbosa. So I'll be taking Barbosa, and that is going to be one of my stronger picks because if she can get these takedowns, um, it should be an easy path to victory. She is a, a two to one favorite. Um, Ernesta uh, Curricotti, she has a tall, slim frame. Uh, she's a versatile striker as well. Uh, she has good she, she has good takedown defense and strong kicks, but I still think that Barbosa shouldn't have much of a problem getting this fight to the ground and grinding out the win. Um, I'm also going to take the uh, prop bet that the fight starts the second round and that the fight starts the third round. Next fight, we got the lightweights. Mauricio Ruffy going up against Jamie Malarkey. This is a tough fight. This is a very interesting fight. Ruffy is relatively new to the UFC, but he does have KO power. He strikes. He's a very versatile striker, uh, and he has good takedowns. So, I guess the I guess I'm gonna take a chance and throw Ruffy in a parlay just to see if he's all up as he's being hyped. See if he can live up to the hype. Uh, but Jamie Malarkey is nothing to play with. This guy's six feet tall. Uh, he, he he's a versatile striker as well, hard puncher. And if he gets in there and starts mixing up his hard punching with the wrestling takedowns, those double legs that he shoots from time to time. He could actually beat Ruffy. So it's going to be interesting. Ruffy is the favorite here, uh, minus 166, which means you got to give up roughly about one and a half to one odds if you want Ruffy. I'm going to take a chance on Ruffy, but I'm not. This is by no stretch of the imagination a confident pick. It's just uh, I can see him winning this fight. Uh, but I could also see Malarkey, if he comes right, he could win this fight as well. But I'm going to ride with Ruffy on this one and see if he can get me this win. Um, I'm also going to take the, the prop bet that the fight starts the second round. And I'm going to throw a little something on the prop bet that the, start, the fight starts the third round. 
both of these guys can hit. And uh, Malarkey has been knocked out, but he's knocked men out too. And he can certainly, if he lands right, he could knock Ruffy out. So I'm going to ride with Ruffy, and I'm going to bet that the fight starts the second round and the fight starts the third round. Next fight, we got the lightweights. Joaquin Silva going up against Drakkar Close. This is going to be a good fight. Very good fight. Both of these guys are hard punchers. Um, Joaquin, Joaquin Silva is a jiu-jitsu black belt. He's very good boxing, and he's a former Muay Thai champ. Drakkar Close, former college wrestler, jiu-jitsu purple belt. Uh, man, but his his leg kicks are very strong, and he has good cardio. I'm going to give Drakkar Close the edge in this one. So I'll throw a little something on Mr. Close for this one, but I think this is going to be a really good fight, very explosive. And I'm going to take the prop bet that the fight starts the second round. Next fight, Jean Silva. This is the men's featherweight division. Jean Silva going up against William Gomez. Jean Silva is on a nine-fight win streak. Uh, he does have KO power. He's a versatile striker. He's a very hard striker. Uh, but um, for some strange reason, I've been looking at William Gomez's fights, and he's on an 11-fight win streak. He's a versatile striker, very good takedown defense. But the element of Gomez's game that makes me want to bet on him is the fact that he's added wrestling to it. Now he mixes in with all those kicks and punches. Now he comes in with takedowns, and he has some very strong kicks, and he is a very fast striker. Uh, I'm going to take the upset here. It's plus 142. Meaning, basically, you get one at almost one and a half to one odds if you take Gomez. I'm going to take the upset here and take Gomez to win. And I'm going to bet that the fight starts, uh, I mean, that the fight goes over one and a half rounds and that the fight goes over two and a half rounds. So I'm taking William Gomez for the upset and over one and a half round prop and over two and a half round prop. Next fight, we got the lightweights. Elvis Brenner going up against Mitt Mick Tebek or a bow. Now, uh, in the comment section, I've been getting some stuff because Elvis Bren Brenner is a phenomenal fighter, no question. And a lot of guys are going to go with Elvis Brenner. I mean, he's a jiu-jitsu black belt. He's been a black belt since he was 15 years old in jiu-jitsu. So, and he's a former Muay Thai champ. Um, he trains with Charles Oliveira. So you know he's probably going to come in there ready with all kinds of submissions. And he can strike. He's a hard puncher. Uh, he has good takedowns. He has a good ground game. But Mick Tebek Orabao is from Kyrgyzstan, or Kyrgyzstan. And when they got that stain on the end of their country <laughs> and they wear real funny shaped hats, they're normally really, really good chain wrestlers. And this is going to be a very interesting fight here uh, because Elvis Brenner's great on the ground as well. But that relentless grappling and chain wrestling tends to wear down even the best of jiu-jitsu practitioners. So I'm going to throw a little sum on Orabao. He's minus 230, meaning you got to give up 2.3 to 1 odds if you want to bet on him. He's the favorite. Um, I'm going to – he's training at Team Alpha Male. He has relentless grappling. He has a very strong chin. And he has KO power as well. He If he hits, he can hurt. So – I'm going to go with Orabao to get this one done, and I'm not going to take an over-under because it, this can go a lot of different ways, this fight here. But Orabao to win. Next fight, we got the strawweight women's division. Carolina Kowakiewicz Koa going up against Yasmin Lucindo. I like Yasmin Lucindo in this one. Uh, Carolina is 38 years old. Um She's still a, 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 a decent fighter. I mean, she's a pressure fighter. She's a hard puncher. She has good cardio. But against Lucindo, Lucindo's a jiu-jitsu black belt. I believe she's been, um, I think she turned pro at like 14 years old, and now she's 21. So she has very fast hands, too, and a strong chin. She can take a punch. So uh, I'll be going with uh, Yasmin Lucindo for this one, and this is one of my stronger picks. And I'm also going to take the prop bet that the fight starts the second round and that the fight starts the third round. Next fight, we got the featherweight men's division. Jack Shore going up against Joe Anderson Brito. Another phenomenal fight. 
This is going to be a very interesting fight. I'm going to take Joe Anderson Brito in this one. The only concern I have is Brito's cardio. If his cardio holds up, he should be able to beat Jack Shore. Uh, Jack Shore is a jiu-jitsu black belt. He's a kickboxing black belt. He has uh, very good boxing, but he has poor takedown defense. Um, Joe Anderson Brito is a jiu-jitsu brown belt. Um, He has great takedown defense, and he has KO power, great takedowns, and a great ground game. So this particular fight, uh, Joe Anderson Brito was at minus one sixty six. I mean, you got to get, uh, you got to give up a little more than one and a half to one odds if you want to bet on him. So uh, I'm going to take Brito to win, and I'm also going to take the over one and a half round prop and the over two and a half round prop. Both of these guys are tough, so I can see these guys lasting against each other for a while. Next fight, we got the middleweights. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a fight. Paul Craig going up against. Kyle Barrio. Oh, man. This is tough. Paul Craig is just a jiu-jitsu master. This guy can submit you off off his back in seconds. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt, uh, five-time jiu-jitsu champion. Um, His boxing's rather weak, though, and his takedown defense is rather weak, and I think that's because he likes being on his back. He knows he can submit a lot of guys from on his back. He has a great ground game. Kyle Barrio can mix it up. He's a judo brown belt, jujitsu black belt, Muay Thai black belt, and he has a very strong chin, so he can take a punch. Um, He strikes from – he throws kicks, he throws punches. Uh, He's a versatile striker. Uh, Very good takedowns, and he has a great ground game. Um, He incorporates wrestling a lot in his ground game, which is what he's going to need if he decides to take Paul Craig down. If he does, that's when it gets a little dangerous because Paul Craig can find submissions out of nowhere. So I will take Kyle Barrio because I think that he will wear down Paul Craig with the takedowns and then with the stand-up because he can hurt Paul Craig, no question. Um, Barrio, can, he can crack if he lands a punch. So I'm going to take uh, Kyle Barrio over Paul Craig, and I'm going to take the prop bet that the fight starts the second round. The uh, Barrio is minus 360, so you got to give up. Uh, almost four to one odds if you want Barrio. Um, so just to give you a heads up, but it will be Barrio for me and the bet that the fight starts the second round. Next fight, we got the middleweight men's division. Michelle Pajaya going up against Ijo Potieria. No question I'm going with Michelle Pajaya P- in this one. Uh, he's a jiu-jitsu black belt. He's a karate black belt. Uh, very hard puncher. Only problem I have with him, I mean, he strikes from so many different angles. He's a phenomenal striker. This guy, he's good. No question. Uh, Michelle Pay is just good. Uh, but the thing I have a problem with is his cardio. Sometimes it's a bit suspect or a little questionable. I'm going to go with Pay for this one um, because Potieras boxing is rather weak and his cardio isn't much better. So I'm going to go with uh, – Michelle Pajaya, and I'm going to take the over one and a half round prop. Next fight, we got the light heavyweights. Anthony Smith going up against Vito Petrino. This fight is pretty much, I would say, a lock. Anthony Smith is 37 and 19. He's 35 years old. He's Jiu-Jitsu Purple Belt. He's fought in so many wars. In some fights, he's just been a flat human punching bag. Um, If you think he can pull off the upset, He's at plus 320, so you get a three to one odds on your money. If you want to take Smith, I don't think his body will respond to what this young, hungry lion is going to be putting on him. Vito Petrino is 26 years old, and he's a four to one favorite. Um, This is definitely one of my stronger picks. Um, Petrino has good wrestling, a great ground game, great takedown defense, a strong chin, and he can hit. He can kick, and he can hit. So I'm going to be going with the young, hungry, undefeated Lion, uh, Vito Petrino, to win this one. I'm not going to do an over-under because I don't know exactly how long Anthony Smith going to last, but Vito Petrino to win in this one. Next fight, we got the Bantamweights. Jonathan Martinez going up against Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo's making a comeback. Uh, Jose Aldo's 36 years old. He's jiu-jitsu black belt, four-time jiu-jitsu champion, uh, very good boxer. Very good leg kicks when he uses them. Lately, he hasn't been doing any leg kicks in in most of his fights, but when he uses them, he has phenomenal leg kicks, and he has a good ground game. 
Jonathan Martinez, jiu-jitsu blue belt, uh, has a very strong chin, but phenomenal cardio. He's a very versatile striker. He has a good ground game, and he has very strong kicks as well, and he kicks everywhere. So I'm going to take Jonathan Martinez over Jose Aldo in this one. Um, next fight, we got the main event. The flyweight men's division, Alejandre Pantoja going up against Steve Ursek. This was a tough pick for me because I like Steve Ursek. I really do. He's a phenomenal fighter. This guy has a right hand that can knock you out cold if he lands it right. But Pantoja is going to test Steve Ursek's grappling. And Pantoja is a jiu-jitsu black belt, former uh, jiu-jitsu state champ. Um, he starts really quick. He gets to the grappling fast. He's a pressure fighter. He has a great ground game, and he can grapple all night. Three, four, five rounds, doesn't matter to Pantoja. He'll just keep grappling. Now, if he can't take Ursek down and has to stand with him, I can definitely see Steve Ursek getting a KO. Steve Ursek is a Steve Ursek is a very hard puncher. He gets good takedowns. He has great cardio, and he has a strong chin and really good boxing. So, and he's he's also a jujitsu black belt. But there are levels to black belts, as we know. So I'm going to give Pantoja the edge as far as on the ground. Um, we don't know if Steve Ursek. This is a major step up in competition for him. We don't know how well he's going to hold up as far as the grappling. You know, sometimes you get in there and you can strike with a guy, but. When he starts throwing in all those takedowns and you keep defending, it can it can drain your gas tank. And then, you know, even your striking gets affected. So I'm going to go with the proven champion, Pantoja, and hope he doesn't get hit by Steve Ursek's right hand too much. And uh, take Pantoja to win. I'm also going to take the over one and a half round prop, the over two and a half round prop. And I'm going to sprinkle a little sum on the over three and a half round prop. So those are my picks. I'll be mixing these up in roughly two pick parlays, no more than three pick parlays. And uh, good luck this Saturday, folks. I hope you guys hit again like we've been doing every week and make some good money. Good luck.